So right now we're coming up on uh, Curtis's car from curtisesdream.com. Curtis lost his life to an overdose. And uh, Jesse and myself and uh, Mika have come to show our support and uh, take a look at the car and show this on the podcast. So this is the car that they're fixing up, Curtis's dream. It's just to raise awareness for addiction. There's some people there. So they're going to finish up this car. One of the brothers is going to drive across the country with it and raise awareness to addiction. And the puppies are saying hello. <laughs> There's the guardian of the car. Yeah. Yes, hello. Here's a shot of the story. Here's a shot of the story. So here we are coming up on Curtis's bench. That'll be Curtis's brother Trevor there. He's been here all day in support of Curtis's car and Curtis's bench, bringing awareness to addiction. There's the purple ribbons, etc. This is Trevor here. He's Curtis's brother. Right. He's here on the bench that uh, they put in as a memorial. This is Jess. She's come down to uh, show support as well. And uh, what would be the most important things you have to say? If I was to put this on my podcast, because I've got oh, to do Be kind to people that are dealing with addictions, you know. I mean, we, we end the stigma by talking about it. And, you know, like I've been telling the people all day, my brother, I think one of the things that really kind of made it hard for him to get treatment was what people think about you after you come out, you know. I used to ask him, because he got, he got diagnosed with schizoaffective. Uh, about six months before he died uh, and I'd ask him well what are the voices saying it was always you know you're a piece of shit you know you're hurting the people around you you're an asshole stuff like that and it's all tied to the image of the drug user it's it's awful and they're not bad people you know they're, they're people they go, you know, I have to agree are you a people Jess Do me a favor, pull the scarf down. This also is what an addict looks like, people. Say hi, Jess. Hi. <laughs> Let them know you're a real person. You're in active addiction currently, yeah. correct? Yeah, actively using. <laughs> yeah, that's hard. And, uh... And relapse, probably, you know. Uh-huh. Sixty-eight months ago. Oh no! All that happens, you know. We get in and out. Right? Yeah. It's hard. It is. It's a hard fight in life. Well. And they don't. They don't give you the things you need when you get better. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Like they just say, "Oh, get on some oxy." Now they have the supplicate. Get on the supplicate, and that'll change your life. Another drug. Yeah. Another drug will change your life. Yeah. Nope. For me, every time I've gotten into treatment, and I've gone over seven times now, I I don't want to go on methadone. I don't want to go on Suboxone. I don't want to go on Katie and I want to be up. Why would I want to be addicted to a pharmacy yeah. when I'm already addicted to a dealer? Yeah. Right? Well, clean, clean supply is still... And that 
it's and everyone has their own way oh. and if that's what makes your life successful then that's good for you that's just not the way that i want my sobriety oh. right my sister choices too yeah and it's hard when it seems real because you lose that perception of whether or not it's real and, and and he would say like he would phone me sometimes and be like fuck you and i'm like what he's like yeah. you drove by i know it was you yeah blah, blah, blah. and i'm like nah man she i'm taking i'm too. taking a shit i'm on the toilet right now you know? <laughs> yeah she does that too Ka katie's severe bipolar so she gets the voices as well and uh Especially when there's the side and the other crap in the oh. drugs that's in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's terrible it's and it makes it worse. It really we're does. identical twins and when we're together, people like don't even like eat much tea. They're like, you're not twins. There's no way you're twins. She doesn't use the stuff with the benzos and, or tries not I to try use not the stuff to. with the benzos. And that. Try to, I so. try to follow rules, you know, that downtown like because it's so dangerous yeah. like you know uh, now they have this trank stuff yeah. one hit and you're asleep all night yeah. and people can do whatever they want to you and and so i don't take a hit off anyone else's pipe or i don't yeah. use anyone else's drugs i only That's... get it from one person i don't go in alleys alone i don't go near doorways i don't walk too, too close to cars like <laughs> And it's sad that you have to follow those rules, but it's what keeps me safe. And I've never gotten robbed and, or anything. So. I mean, there's a community out there for that reason, and they have come up with their own solution. Yeah. And we have well, the faith within them. The main one is staying safe, and it's like, how do we maintain that safety? Yes, I it. agree. It's just get the fuck over it, man. People do drugs. You know, yeah. and people, people are using drugs, and we have to get over this moralistic perspective that, yeah. that drug users are bad. Like, that there are the not, people in the alleys with their hoods on, freaking yeah. gonna go rob your. I have not met one bad drug car. user <laughs> that I've had a conversation with that I would say you're a bad person. You know, I know bad people exist, but at the same time, those bad people came from somewhere, and there's usually some form of social obstacle in the way. Or something yep. that has created that. I and no one wants agree. to no one wants to look at things from that perspective. No one wants to sit there and break down what we are to blame for, you know, what structural obstacles we have created. And you know what? It's it's get over your moralism. A lot of people are I've met are actually really smart. Mm -hmm. Probably smarter than the average person. Well, and that's why you're tortured, because <laughs> you're you're smart. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, same thing with a lot of people that are in the prisons and a lot of the people that are finding find themselves or they're really good the at something yeah. like a live man a lot of people who are just so like artistic or they there's like one thing that they're like amazingly good at i'm gonna sit on the bench yeah, i just like to take bench. a seat here so it's here at mineral so if you're at Minaru Park, by the little fountain area and the duck pond, please come and take a minute and sit on the bench.